Right before we jump into this video, if you would like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and I'm here to show you how you can add, that's right, in quotes, a second card slot to the Canon EOS R and the EOS RP. Now we're not physically taking these cameras apart and then putting a second card slot in, but we're gonna show you how you can make it seem like you have a second card slot in just a minute. Now Nikon can't do the same thing on their current cameras, the, the Z6 and the Z7, they only have one card slot. These EOS R and the EOS RP, one card slot. Sony's, you don't have to worry as much because they already have two card slots on their full frame mirrorless lineup. But I'm here to show you how you can make your EOS RP and the R kind of have a second card slot because you can shoot and have your files transfer automatically to your phone, to your tablet, to your iPad. The only problem is you can't transfer raw. Now you can transfer full res JPEGs, but there are some cons that come with that. But to start this off, let me show you how you connect your camera to, in this case, the iPad right here. So with the EOS R, which is our test camera right here, I hit menu, and I'm gonna go ahead into the wrench, number five, wireless communication settings, Wi-Fi functions. Now we've already set up the camera and the iPad. It doesn't take long at all. It's really easy if you follow the instructions that are on the screen. I hit iPad one, it's now searching. So it's blinky blinkying. I go onto the iPad right here and I have to go into Wi-Fi and the camera shows up right there. So now that is connected. Now I go into the Canon Connect app. Now the Canon Connect app is free. It's really easy to use and it's also an awesome app. So if you put it on your phone and you're recording video of yourself, you can change the settings, you can hit record, you can see a live view. It's a fantastic app. So now there's a couple of things we need to do here and it connected for us. Now it may take 20 seconds or so for it to connect once you get it all set up, but here it is, it's ready to go. So we wanna go to auto transfer. You click auto transfer and this is what it looks like when you come in. We have to turn auto transfer on by clicking that button and then it has reduce image size. It's currently automatically selected to on. That means it's gonna give you just a two megapixel transfer. Now that's something similar to what Nikon can do with SnapBridge, except for the fact that you have to go in individually and transfer the pictures where this is gonna be automatic. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because I wanna transfer the full res JPEG. Now, this is already set to go, so let me show you this before we get into all of the cons. I've got my test subjects right here, we've got models, we got Mr. He-Man on Battle Cat, and I think it was Battle Cat, I don't even remember the green guy's name. We've got Skeletor with his purple Battle Cat, I don't even know what they, I don't remember, I'm not a kid anymore. Oh, you wanna know how you know that these were mine? Right here, Steven, right here, JP. It says JP right here on the foot. My mom wrote that because the neighbor kids, they had different initials on theirs and they always broke theirs. So you knew that if this was, if you found this at their house, that it's mine, JP. That's right, does Battle Cat have a JP on the bottom of it too? Ma, ma, you failed, the, you didn't put the, you didn't put it on this one. Oh well, oh, what? Oh, anyway. Maybe these, were, maybe these were somebody else's and I stole them because they don't have JPs on them. Anyway, let's take a picture so I can show you how this thing works. Um, I need to go back here. We're gonna start taking a picture. Now one of the things is, so oop, I just took two pictures. It takes roughly six to seven seconds to get the transfer going, but you can see that it's coming in right now. They're there. Now what we can do is we can go into the Photos app and here they are. Full res JPEGs already transferred. There's one, there's two. Now what happens if you rapid fire shoot? Well, He-Man and, and Skeletor, get ready for your close up. Here we go. Oh yes. Oh, oh, we're shooting, we're shooting. Skeletor right there, hold it, give me a smile. Ooh, your jaw looks like it's gonna fall off. He-Man, stop flexing. You're not me, I'm bigger than you. I'm not really bigger than you. But you can see all of the files coming in. So it knows that these are not transferred yet. It's gonna start loading them. And as they come in, they come in. Now, here's what I would do. You, you have to think about this. If you're on a photo shoot 
and you're using your phone. How much storage do you have on your phone? If it's a 64 gig or a 128 or a 256, how much empty space do you actually have on the phone to save these images? What happens if your battery dies? What happens if you get a phone call? Because usually a phone call disconnects everything else that's going on because you're listening to music. Well, then it kicks out and then your cell phone call pick, uh, picks up and maybe that stops it. So one of the recommendations, like this isn't a stopgap to, to replace a second card. There's nothing to replace a second card other than actually having a second card slot in the camera. It's a way that you can do a secondary backup just in case something happens. Or one of the positive things is you could then say if you're at a concert and you're shooting for a company and there's somebody sitting in the social media area that, or with a computer or a tablet and they want to edit and get the stuff right up to social media, they can go ahead and do that. This is a nice option to have in case you're doing a photo booth at a family event and you want the pictures to pop up right here after you take them. Or if you have clients in the other room and you want them to see this and stay out of your way, that's one of the solutions that you could do. And I think it's done transferring. So really, that wasn't that bad to transfer those 10, 12, 15 pictures in a row. They're all here. But my recommendation would be using a phone or a tablet that is just on airplane mode, so it's not gonna get distracted. It's a secondary one that you have. If this is an option that you wanna use, I'd make sure that I'm plugged into a USB charger so it's always charged up. And then when you're done with the shoot, you kinda get rid of the files. A con is the fact that you're using more battery power from your camera, which means, because you're juicing it with all this Wi-Fi, so your battery life may not be as good. Now you'll notice that the file name says .cr3. I'm not sure why it says that, maybe because I'm shooting raw in the camera and it's transferring just the JPEG, but they are JPEGs that are coming through on to this iPad. Now you can use another program that Canon has called DPP Express to transfer raw files, but it doesn't work the same way as this and you're locked into just using DPP Express to edit your files. You can't go into Lightroom Mobile, which would have made more sense. So this is a great feature. It's a nice option to have. It doesn't replace or make up for the fact that you only have one card slot because you can't do raw files. You can do those JPEGs, you can do the full res, which is a really nice feature, and I think it does a great job with doing it. But this isn't really a feature that I would probably use all the time. Now, one of the things we did test out, which we didn't show you right here because we're recording the, the, the iPad right here, is that you can lock your phone and still have the files transferred to it. So like I said, it's a cool option to have but there are pros, there are cons. It doesn't replace the fact that you can't transfer raw. If you could transfer raw files, that would be cool, except for the fact that, well, if you're taking 20 gigs of raw files, you're gonna be transferring a lot more data. It's gonna use a lot more battery power from this. And it doesn't make up for the fact that Canon, Nikon, you guys should just put second card slots in the cameras and we wouldn't have to worry about this. And then this would be an even better added bonus to have on top of it. Now, what do you guys think that this could be used for? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Does it make up for the fact that it just has one card slot? Did I not think of a good usage that's just standing there? You're like, Jared, it would be perfect for X. Well, if so, leave a comment down below. And that's pretty much it. That's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Froknowsphoto.com. See ya.